Hi, it's Alyssa from RomeWise, your go-to guide to Rome. On today's video, I want to talk to you about two very important things you need to know if you're planning to visit Rome and Italy right now in the summer and fall of 2021. Back in May, I took one of those COVID-tested flights between Rome and the United States. I went over with you the rules for what you needed to do to take one of these flights and to visit Italy. Things have changed since then. So, I have some updates on what you need to know if you're flying into Italy and back home again. I also wanna go over with you this new green pass that you may have heard about, which has to do with what you need to do when you're in Italy and you wanna go sightseeing, eating in restaurants, traveling around the country. There is a lot to go over, so stay with me. I do want to start off by saying that I realize that many of you still cannot travel here for a variety of reasons. Some of you have told me that even though you can travel here or you could travel, you're just not ready, you're nervous, you're worried, you're unsure. I get that. I understand this is a difficult situation. We are not back to normal yet, but I do have hope. I'm seeing progress and so I hope that those of you who want to travel here can and will travel here as soon as possible. I'm not just saying this, uh, Rome really needs you, misses you, and it's just not the same without you. So I hope you can travel as soon as possible. But for those of you who are planning to travel to Rome and Italy in the near future, this video is for you. I wanna give you these updates so that when you do come here, you're prepared and there are no surprises. So this video is about two things what to do when you're coming to Italy and what to do once you're in Italy. First of all, in June of this summer, Italy opened for tourism to citizens and residents of many countries around the world. If you visit one of several government websites such as reopen.eu, which is an EU-run website, or Viaggiare Sicuri, which is a website run by one of the Italian ministries, you can see exactly what you need to do when coming from your specific country into Italy. I've got links to those websites in the description below. I also have these links on pages on the RomeWise website that talk about these issues. In this part of the video, I want to talk to you about what you need to know, what you need to have to visit Italy. So besides your passport, right now everybody coming into Italy needs to fill out a passenger locator form. This is a very simple app. You can download it and you can even fill it out before you get to the airport, which I do recommend just because it saves you a little time and stress once you're in the airport. In order to enter Italy, besides your passport and your passenger locator form, you're going to need to show your COVID status in order to avoid quarantine. So there are three ways that you can show your COVID status. Here are the three ways. Number one, you can show that you have been fully vaccinated at least two weeks prior to your trip. By fully vaccinated, I mean either one shot of Johnson & Johnson or both shots of any one of the other three approved vaccines. Number two, you can show a negative test. A negative test can be either a PCR or an antigen test. It has to have been taken no more than 48 hours before your flight. Number three, you can show proof of recovery from COVID no more than six months prior to your flight. If your recovery from COVID is longer than six months prior to your flight, you will need to show one of the other two things. So how can you prove your COVID status? Well, if you're coming from the EU, you are likely to have the EU Digital COVID Certificate. The EU came up with a consistent way that countries in the EU could have this QR code, this digital certificate that would show COVID status and be easily read across the EU. So this is the green pass that you're hearing about. Now in the EU, it's in digital form. What about those of you not coming from the EU or one of the Schengen countries and you do not have a digital green pass? If you're coming from outside the EU or Schengen area and you do not have a digital green pass, you still can show your COVID status. If you have a paper form, vaccination card, a negative test, proof of recovery from COVID, and you're coming from the US, the UK, Canada, Israel, and Japan, Italy is recognizing these paper forms as your green pass. 
I mentioned these very specific countries, but there are other countries that are being recognized, but the rules might change a little bit. So you'll need to go on one of those websites that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So again, reopen.eu or Viajare Sicuri and fill in the form and you'll see what you need to do when you're coming from your particular country if it's not one of the ones that I just named. So do you need a digital green pass? Can you get a digital green pass if you don't have one? No, your paper green pass, your paper proof of your COVID vaccination or negative test or proof of recovery from COVID, that's your green pass. It does not have to be digital. You just need to have ID and you're good to go. So do you need to test before you come to Italy or once you land in Italy? That was part of these COVID tested flights. At the moment, if you are coming into Italy with your green pass, you don't need to do any further testing either prior to or once you arrive in Italy. So we've already talked about the green pass. Now we're gonna go into the second part of this video, which is also about the green pass. And we're gonna go over what you need to know and what you need to have when you want to go sightseeing, eat and drink in restaurants and cafes, and travel around the country. In late July, the Italian government decreed that as of August 6th, in order to visit any sites, monuments, museums, or to eat or drink in a bar or cafe, you need a green pass. Really, you just need to know that a green pass is a generic way of saying that you are showing your COVID status, even if it's in paper form. To enter the country, you need to show that you were vaccinated at least two weeks prior to your trip. But once you're in Italy, many of the sites and museums, including the Vatican Museums, the Colosseum, they are stating that your vaccination has to be proof of at least one of the shots. I would suggest that you check on the website of anything that you're planning to visit in order to be sure that you can use this just one shot to enter that site or monument. And if you're going to a restaurant, check with the restaurant. Um, I think that some of the restaurants are not 100% clear on this yet. They're, some of them are a little bit more ahead of others, but check with the restaurant before you go. So if you're planning to use a negative test as your green pass, this is a pretty important thing to know. When you use a negative test as your green pass to enter Italy, it has to be taken no more than 48 hours before you fly. What this means is that once you arrive in Italy, your negative test is pretty much expired. And at this point, you will need to take further tests in order to be able to enter sites, monuments, museums, go to restaurants, etc. And you'll have to take them possibly every two days or at least 48 hours before whatever it is that you wanna do. So you may be taking these tests almost every two days throughout your trip. It's very easy to get an antigen test. Most of the pharmacies around Rome and other parts of Italy have tents set up. Usually you have to book in advance, but usually you can book for the same day. It's a pretty quick procedure. You'll have written results in about 15 minutes. The tests were 22 euros. I think they're lowering or they've lowered the price to 15 euros. Either way, they're not free. You will have to pay for these tests. So again, for sites, monuments, museums, pretty much anything that you're gonna visit indoors, you are going to need a green pass. For restaurants, bars, cafe, the green pass is specifically for sitting down and eating inside. If you're going to eat outside or drink outside, you do not need a green pass. You also don't need a green pass if you're just going to stand and consume something at a bar. Sometime in September, we're gonna see that the green pass is also required for flights within Italy, ferries, long range buses, and long range trains. At this time, you do not need a green pass to take public transportation. You also do not need a green pass to go shopping or go to a shopping center. Also at the time of this video, you do not need a green pass to enter your hotel. However, the green pass is required for closed spaces, things like gyms, spas, pools, etc. So if your hotel has one of these facilities, you will need a green pass to use that facility. So we've talked about the green pass for entering Italy. We've talked about the green pass for going around Italy. What about masks? So traveling to Italy, in my experience so far, traveling between the US and Italy, and even a little bit within the US, every single airport that I have been in so far, masks are required the entire time you're in the airport. Also in my experience, so far properly worn masks are required throughout the entire flight, whether it's transcontinental or within Europe or within the United States. So as for mask requirements in Italy, if you're outside and not in a crowd situation, masks are not required. However, masks are required at all times on any 
public transportation, once you get into a taxi, anytime you visit any site, monument, museum, including the Colosseum, which yes, it is outside, but it is required to be fully masked when you're in the Colosseum, in the Roman Forum, Palatine Hill, those are outside sites, but masks are required at all times. If you visit any shop or anything indoors, a hotel lobby, if you go into a bank or something, you will need to be wearing a mask at all times when you're inside. Speaking of masks, RomeWise has some very cute Rome-themed masks, so you can head on over to the RomeWise shop and get some Rome-themed masks for your trip if you like. So these rules, guys, I'm trying to keep them together for you. I'm trying to keep them current for you. I have three pages on RomeWise that talk about all of these things. I've got a page just about the Green Pass. I have another page just about travel and travel rules. And I have a third page that is just about coronavirus in Rome, in Italy, the mask situation, what's open, what's closed, etc. So I update those pages once a week and you can check those pages for current information. The Green Pass is required in Italy and France has a similar requirement. At this time, other EU countries do not. Who knows? Again, these things could change, so you always wanna check, and I would suggest checking on the reopen.eu website, which again, I'm linking to below. Obviously, I'm doing my best to be as accurate as I can. If you wanna leave some questions below, I'll do my best to answer them quickly and accurately. These rules can change, they do change, they are changing, so I will make new videos for you once things really change officially. I also urge you to check with your airline before you travel, no matter what, because some of the airlines have their own rules and also the rules can change, so check and double check when you book your flight, check again before you travel, and check again even the day of travel. When you're traveling back to your home country, many countries are requiring tests, a negative test before you fly home. For the US, you will need a test, and it can be an antigen test. It does not have to be a PCR test, but double check with your airline. Antigen tests are really easy to take. You can find tents at pharmacies all around Rome, and you can get your antigen test there you'll get the results in about 15 minutes, so that's very easy. If you need a PCR test, I do have links on my page about Travel to Rome, where you can find links where you can get PCR tests in Rome and other parts of Italy. Well, guys, <laughs> that's it. I think we've gone over a lot. I hope that you have found this video helpful. If you're planning to travel to Rome and Italy anytime in the near future, I hope this makes it a little bit easier for you. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button below. Stay safe and we'll see you at the next video. Ciao for now.